a hundred thieves, hundred thieves in the market to build their own game. So the headline here, hundred thieves developing video game with pros and streamers. Hundred thieves announced the development of its own video game project X, which will be a collaborative effort with pros and streamers. CEO Matthew Nateshot Hug and Hundred Thieves President John Robinson revealed the org's next big initiative on May 18th, adding another branch to its already ambitious list of business verticals. Concrete details of the tale are slim, but the Hundred Thieves execs are planning to shake up how game development looks by actively incorporating input from streamers, pros, and community members. Guys, where have we heard this before? <laughs> This, I mean, look, I always said these guys are mostly unoriginal, mostly pretty bad business people. These are mostly mismanaged companies. But come on, where I mean, this is like ripping off the dock completely here. No, is no one bothered by this. Jeff, no, I'm not bothered by this. If anything, I would say I thought you were going to say ripping off the business of esports because I have to give you know you and 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 really actually William credit. I remember many, many podcasts ago, like two years ago, you know, you guys were talking about this with several esports orgs, um, whether it made sense to eventually be vertically integrated and have, you know, esports orgs actually create their own game. And at the time, I, I thought it was ridiculous. Um, turns out I was wrong. Um, so <laughs> yeah, kudos to you guys for calling that. In terms of this, I, you know, I'm not bullish on this, but the one thing I guess I would maybe play devil's advocate with myself a little bit is that right now there there's, there's a war for talent going on in terms of developers and the big video game companies are not really the greatest place to work, right? There's a lot of unrest at Activision, Ubisoft, EA, really everywhere. Um, so maybe a big brand like hundred thieves that people really like and consumers identify gamers identify with, maybe they have some sort of recruiting advantage where they can actually hire talent because of that. Um, I could see that potentially being something on a pitch deck that would maybe get investors excited. In practice, I think you hit the nail on the head that these guys aren't that great of operators. We saw with FaZe Clan, like just the disaster that they've been um, in their brief period of time, you know, trying to get into the public markets, just overspending, not executing. So like, do I have confidence that an esports org is going to be able to build a video game and hire talent and actually hit hit deadlines and not overspend on costs. No, I really, I really don't. Um, but yeah, those are, those are sort of my, my take. Uh, Jimmy, Lindsay, any of you guys have a, have a, a different take on this? I just want to, I, I, I feel bad. I want to get a couple of comments on the last topic here. When says Lego FIFA, that would be, that would be interesting. <laughs> actually, I think that would do super well because that's totally uh, like on point in terms of the market there. Johan says, I think that remains to be seen. If a FIFA partnership provides PES with a big new surge in market share, then FIFA might be worth the 300 million they want and EA would have made a blunder. If it does not provide them with significant new market share, EA might have made a good decision. It's hard to judge that at this time since it's so unprecedented for soccer games as EA had this exclusive since the genre's pioneer, basically. Yeah, I mean, Johan, we, I agree. We, we won't know until we see the actual game, right? It's kind of hard to just predict based on... A, we just don't have enough information. Who's the developer and what does the game look like uh, until we have that hard. Matt says a super smash game with major influencers and gamers from the industry would be cool. I mean, isn't that just super smash? Um, Chris says, at what point do investors start to question what's being done with their money for a sports team? <laughs> I mean, clearly no one's asking questions here, Chris. Like, I'm pretty sure that's obvious. No one has ever really asked questions with most of these esports teams. Can I just throw a hot take out there, guys? And let me, let me, I'm curious what you guys think. Is this basically an admission that esports teams as a business and a business model have failed? Right? That we can, we can sort of soundly say now that esports teams cannot be successful as esports teams. You either become a media outlet or you become a game developer or you become something entirely else. But no one, it seems, figured out how to make a successful esports team. And this is sort of an admission of that. Is that not fair to say? I mean, I think, it, I think it's fair for the more media and content orgs. I think there's plenty of teams who are doing 
completely different things in the competitive scene. But I certainly, I don't, I've been thinking about this all day, or I guess since it got announced. And yeah, I don't really, I don't know. It's so hard with Hunter Thieves because I just don't see the vision for the ones that are more content focused where they don't turn into just a purely media organization. I don't see how they can keep the competitive gaming persona easily. When I started thinking about this, I started thinking like, oh, well, maybe maybe they'll develop a mobile game and that'll be super engaging for the community. And they're, they're kind of a hyper casual org. They can reach a hyper casual audience with a mobile game. Maybe that would be good. But then it's like, but what's the return on value for all of that? And at what point are you just then a mobile game company? I don't know. I just, I think that there's definitely something to be said for orgs that are actually out there competing and winning prize funds and being able to monetize in that way and being successful that way. But I, I struggle a lot with the face clans and the hunter thieves who keep getting investment for a product that I think I just probably don't believe in as much. Um, and I, I don't understand where it's going. Well, I don't think they know who they are, right? That's part of the problem. They, I don't think any of these orgs really know who they are anymore. And it, it's always this moving target where we're content, we're hoodies, we're games, where, what are we? Like, we, we don't know. Let's just try everything. And until the money runs out is what is like the management style here. Um, one says, wouldn't it be easier for teams just to go partner with the game in final stages of development, e.g. like Mr. Beastburger? If the main goal is to leverage their brand to increase sales, a bit like influencers shilling crypto games and coins, feels capital intensive to make your own game like how many games succeed. When, uh, to me, that's, that's comment of the day. This is, is spot on in my mind, right? Like, wh- why make your own game? I don't get it. When you could, a- you could capture 90% of the value by partnering with a game developer. This is exactly what Gen G just did. And they've been reaping a lot of benefits as a result. They partnered with a developer on the launch of a game and got their folks behind it, got their streamers behind it, helped with the whole launch. And it it was really well done and it was really smart. So there are teams out there that are doing things in the game development space that I think are successful. Obviously, it remains to be seen exactly what Project X is and what Hunter Thieves is going to do. I don't necessarily have a lot of faith, but... I am also prepared to be wrong on that if they blow it out of the water and admit that. Um, I just, I, I totally it, agree. I mean, know. these guys haven't proven that they can execute on a level that I think would be required to create an entirely different business model. And I also, you know, it almost, I don't want to say it offends me, but I think, I think what they are innately doing is saying almost that marketing is more important than actually building a great game. And building a great game engine and building server, like stuff that they've never had to do, right? They have no, and I don't know what kind of game they're going to build, but they have no, you know, server architecture, you know, people on staff probably know how to balance a game, like no character design. Like they need to bring all of that in house. The only thing they have is distribution. So maybe like they have a little bit of better, you know, they, they may be able to boost distribution a little bit. Like if they took an, you know, a normal game and they got behind it, like Lindsay just said, they may help. But Distribution that, that that's the most anyone important. can buy, just to be clear. Yes, exactly. Anyone could go to the, uh, you know, someone else like FaZe and say, hey, you know, and like, we're going to pay you $50 million to only stream our game for the next yeah. month. And Jeff, building on that, like, I've never heard of a game development company come out and say, hey, you know, guys, we failed because you know, like we just didn't get, we couldn't get enough streamers to play our, like it just like distribution is not why the gaming business model fails, right? It's not like, meaning it's not like, oh my God, we spent so much on distribution for our game. This is why it failed. And therefore we have to bring it in house, right? Like it's no, that said no one ever. And so like, I I will tell you right now, guys, this will fail miserably and I'll give you a hundred reasons why it will fail. Uh, like we can start with the management who's, you know, to Jeff's point has not shown any ability to execute b- beyond selling hoodies. Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, two, they're, they're going to spend all this money making a game. And the idea is we're going to push our eyeballs to this game, right? That's our big advantage. But if the game's no good, which there's a high likelihood, none of that matters. And even if the game is good, the current state of gaming is, you know, there's more games than ever coming out than ever and and the shelf life of gaming of games is drastically reducing is is decreasing over time right people play a game for three weeks 
and then it goes away and then the next hot thing comes along. So all this investment, so it can be red hot for three weeks and then what? Yeah, that's assuming the game's good. Um, so you're investing into something with a massively short, short shelf life, which doesn't make sense to me. It, there's, there's misalignment there. And then the third thing is just this totally unoriginal. And I said with the doc, it was a wrong approach. I'm going to say it with 100 Thieves. It's a wrong approach. You don't build great art, which is what games are, via consensus, via like a c- committee. You don't get 12,000 opinions and then make decisions based on 12,000 opinions. That's not how great art is made and it's never been made that way. And I mean, the fact that they're just knocking off the dock shows how unoriginal and lame these guys are. Truly. 